Okay, I wanted to talk to you about how I think of a C chord on my instrument. So uh, I play the marimba. If you go to the bottom of the bass clef, and then you go down, the bottom of the bass clef is here, you go down two more ledger lines, and this is the C below bass clef. When we come up here, we're in the middle of bass clef here, green, buses, drive, fast, always. Then we have middle C, which is marked by this orange stick right here. So after middle C, we are in the treble clef right here. This is every good boy does fine. And then above the top of the treble clef, we have another octave and a fifth uh, up to the high C. Um, okay, so what I've done is when I think of a C major chord, what is in my mind are where are these mallets are placed. So down here at the bottom, this is the bass range from below middle, below the bass clef all the way up to somewhere around here at the top of the bass clef. There's a little overlap here. But these down here are my bass notes. So I'm, I've got the bass mallets here marking them. Then in this part, we're getting into our chord range. Your chord range goes a little below middle C. Um, and chords are going to be these white mallets here with the yellow tab all the way up here up somewhere this is the top here's the top of the treble clef so melodies uh, chords can certainly go up into this range but I would say this is the main area where the chords are just around middle C a little below middle C and around an octave or a little more above so up here we have our melody range so we have our melody here are some hard mallets with the red uh, little flashing. So this would be the melody, um, top of the treble clef, and even a little above, flute and piccolo range up here, and xylophone. So here are my xylophone mallets. This is the very, very high um, pitched notes. Okay, so when I think of a C major chord, I think of it across these different ranges, and your instrument may have more or fewer um, notes that you can play. Uh, you might call that the tessitura, I guess, um, an instrument's tessitura. Marimba is fairly wide. It can go all the way down the same bottom note as a cello, way down here. And it can go up here into xylophone range, lower xylophone range, um, in the upper top range. So it's quite a wide tessitura for one instrument. If you're a singer, for instance, unless you're Bobby McFerrin, you're not going to have this wide of a range um, or someone like Bobby McFerrin. Um, okay, so when I put the C major into this instrument, um, what you can see are we have, we have the C major. Here's the root C, E, and G, the third and the fifth. So we have a third from the root to the third. We have a third from the third to the fifth. And then we have a fourth. This is a little bit wider angle here. So these two angles match. They're both thirds, although this is a major third, this is a minor third. But on the out of the scale, they both skip a note in the scale. And then we have this interval, which is the fourth, where two notes are skipped in the scale. So if we're doing if we're in the key of C major and this is a one chord, then we have do me and sol. Do to me is a third, me to sol is a third, and then sol to sol to do is a fourth. And then we would go again third third fourth, third third fourth. So when I'm when I start singing these exercises, the AV looking exercises. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start on a note. I'll start down here in my range. Do. So we're going to start on, we're singing from all, any of these notes to any of the other notes. So if I start on the root and I go to the third and back to the root. Do, do, re, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, re, do. Try to sing the, the notes louder the ones that are chord tones and let the passing tones or neighbor tones let them be quieter down below do re mi re do uh, and i'm up do it upside down 
mi, re, do, re, mi. Then we can go these two. Mi, fa, so, fa, mi. Mi, fa, so, fa, mi. Mi, fa, so, fa, mi. So, fa, mi, fa, so. So, fa, mi, fa, so. So, fa, mi, fa, so. Now we're going to go from sol to do. Sol, la, ti. Sorry, this is sol. Sol. Sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, sol. Sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, sol. Sol, la, ti, do. Sol, la, ti, do. Sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, sol. Do, ti, la, sol, la, ti, do. Do, ti, la, sol, la, ti, do. Do, ti, la, sol, la, ti, do. Now, um, as you go through this sheet, I'm not going to go through all of them, but the idea is you do drilling from one note to another note, turn around and come back to the note you started on. All of the possibilities of doing this are on this page, that the handout that comes with this video. So for instance, if you're going from Do to Do, this might be the way we would normally think of our scale. Do, I'll do it down here. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Ti, La, Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Ti, La, Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Ti, La, Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. Do, Ti, La, Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Um, then you would start, the next one has Mi to Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Mi fa sol la ti do re mi re do ti la so fa mi. Mi fa sol la ti do re mi re do ti la so fa mi. And then sol. Oh, I should do that one down too. Mi re mi re. Mi re do ti la so fa mi fa sol la ti do re mi re do ti la so fa mi re. So fa mi fa sol so fa mi fa sol la ti do re mi. Uh, as you can hear, I'm not perfect with these, but I'm comfortable with them. Uh, once I orient myself, I should be able to hear those chord tones and stay in the chord. Sol, sol, la, ti, do, sol, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, sol, fa, mi, re, do, ti, la, sol. Sol, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la. Sol, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, sol, fa, mi, re, do, ti, la, sol. So la ti do re mi fa so fa mi re do ti la so. And upside down. So, so fa mi re do ti la so la ti do re mi fa so. So la, so fa mi re do ti la so la ti do re mi fa so. Now I'm realizing I'm a lot better on the do to do ones up and down and sol to sol ones up and down, but the me to me ones. I need to practice that a little bit. This is, I found a blind spot in my own. So as you go through these, this page, all the exercises on this page, what I want you to do is, let's say it's soul to me. Pick a soul to me that's in your range. Like I know my range is comfortable from this C um, all the way up to maybe approaching this C, middle C. Um, so I have a full octave and a fifth. I'm pretty comfortable. This octave and a fifth is my most comfortable range. This part is my break. So I'd want to try and avoid, unless you're a singer or unless you're working on this for some personal reason, which I do this sometimes, but I don't, I, I don't for my general exercise when I'm working on my sight scene. Um, I, I avoid the break range. So, uh, just so I don't have to deal with the technical issues in there, and you'll see me do it in class. It's already happened a couple times in class where I sing up into my break and my voice just gets confused until I get above the break where I can do some falsetto. But my falsetto is super weak. So I generally try not to get up in this range if I don't have to, or if, if I'm doing any, if I'm demonstrating something important, I try to stay down here. That means if I need to go from the fifth of the C chord to the third of the C chord, I want to go down here where I'm comfortable singing. Sol, la, ti, do, re, mi. Sol, la, ti, do, re, mi. Rather than, you need to know, by doing this, I'm realizing when I'm singing a C chord 
I can go down, I've got that little base range with the root on the bottom, because I can't go much below this C, if at all. Then the top part of my range, when I get, I can sing that full octave, and then in the second octave, when I get up to around the fifth, when I'm on a C chord, the fifth in my upper octave is where my break starts. And if I go from this fifth to the root up here, that's where my break is, and I've got to make sure I'm clearly either in falsetto if I'm trying to sing up here, if I'm going to be singing this part, and real voice, full voice if I'm down here. Um, hopefully, as I practice more and more with my singing, my, my real voice will push up over here confidently and strongly, and my falsetto will push even deeper down into here, and then this overlap area will be just flexible where I could go either way. But uh, I have little time to work on that. Uh, I'm still working on it. We'll see what, if, it ever, if I ever achieve it. So um, if I were to set up, say, a C minor chord, um, just for visualization purposes, and this, this is going to be different on your instrument. If you have a string instrument, for instance, um, I guess I could just show my face here. If you have a string instrument, for example, then um, you can play the same note in multiple places. So um, that's going to look a little bit different to you than it does here on, on my linear instrument. This would be more like what it would look like on a piano. But if, you're, if you play a string instrument, you may have some um, mental gymnastics or you, your, your model is going to look a little bit different because the same note shows up in multiple places on your, on your fingerboard or fretboard. Um, but you should have an idea eventually after you do this and you start doing these key workouts, you should have a pretty good idea of how your voice fits into each chord and also um, which parts of your instrument are going to be um, where you need to go depending on which part of the chord, which part of the chord you're in and which chord you're in on your instrument. Uh, you need to get start getting familiar with all that stuff. Okay.